Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to uh, module 4, we are discussing, we are briefly reviewing uh, matrix algebra and um, next we will uh, understand complex conjugate of a matrix. Complex conjugate of a matrix um, uh, is uh, will be given by um, taking the complex conjugate. conjugate of every element which means that if I have a matrix like this A1, A2, A3, this is a column matrix which is a vector then A star is going to be making complex conjugate of each element. Adjoint of a matrix, it is similar to transpose, it is similar to transpose, but elements are replaced by its complex conjugate. Which means that I have now i j if I use adjoint if you find out adjoint, adjoint is defined by this dagger sign, adjoint is going to be a j i star. So, I am changing the, I am interchanging the row and column at the same time each element will be uh, the comp will be taken to be complex conjugate. So, so let us say I have a function of uh, a matrix like this 1 i 2 i then adjoint of that matrix would be first of all we will change the row and column and then we will take the complex conjugate. One is real, so th there is no difference, i would be minus i now and 2i would be minus 2i. When a equals a dagger that we have already seen, when an operator is equivalent to its equal to its own adjoint it is called Hermitian operator or Hermitian matrix in this case. An operator will be expressed in terms of matrix. So, uh, the name can be interchanged um, uh, depending on the usage. So, we will have Hermitian, this is called Hermitian operator, uh, Hermitian matrix right now we will call it matrix. Hermitian matrix is defined when it is um, when it's adjoint, it, when it becomes self adjoint we will look at dot vector dot product generally algebraic definition of vector a vector is represented like this way in algebra ax plus j ay plus k az i j k with cap they are representing the unit vector along that x y z axis this is x this is y this is z. So, unit vector is going to be i cap 
j cap k cap. So, uh, if we do that and and then b vector another vector can be represented by b x plus b y plus b z. Here we are representing the vectors with the help of i j k basis and algebraic definition of dot product. So, we can take the dot product as a dot b which is given by a x b x plus a y b y plus a z b z. It is because i i i dot i would be i dot i would exist it will be 1, but i dot j or i dot k they are all 0. So, that is why because they are perpendicular it, it becomes cos theta. So, i i dot i is nothing but 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by cos theta cos theta is going to be um, cos theta is going to be 90 degree because this angle is 90 degree. So, we get 1. So, this is the definition comes from algebra and in the matrix form if I want to represent it as I have told you before that this vector can be represented in the matrix form. When I represent the vector in matrix form it becomes a column matrix A x A y A z and B becomes a column matrix also B x B y B z these are represented with respect to this basis. Often we do not um, uh, mention that one implicitly we say uh, we keep it impli I mean we keep it hidden um, in um, when we are describing the matrix representation of the uh, uh, of a vector assuming that we know what kind of basis we are using, but we have to remember that the actual terminology or actual construct of the uh, of the statement should be following this vector a and b has been represented with uh, 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 using this uh, column matrices uh, with respect to this particular basis if we change the basis the value of each element will change so so let's see um, uh, what does it mean by this dot product? If we do the dot product, it means that I have to first. Um, so dot product, I have to reach this uh, value. Uh, this expression. Finally, I have to reach this expression. This expression, and this expression can be obtained by taking like this way. A dot B. When I say A dot B. in the vectorial notation this is equivalent to a dagger multiplied by b this is the matrix representation a dagger b and a dagger is the adjoint of a adjoint of a is going to be a x star a y star a z star multiplied by b y b uh, sorry b x b y b z in the end what I get a x star b x plus a y star b y plus a z star b z and that is the definition of the dot product of two matrices which you get here is equivalent uh, expression. So, dot product has to be done like this way um, in, in the matrix form and length of, a, of the vector is called norm of the vector and norm is represented by following. The norm is actually length of the vector and 
and that is represented by it is actually this is representation of the vectorial representation then we will go for uh, matrix representation. Matrix representation is going to be A dagger B to the power half that is the norm which is nothing but square root of A x square plus A y square plus A z square. That is the way the norm would be represented in the in the in the matrix form. This is the matrix form of the of the norm. So, um, we will uh, now move to inner and outer product we will erase this part to make some space. inner product a column matrix before we represent the inner product a column matrix represents a vector I have already mentioned that one and in if I use Dirac bracket notation it is it is not bracket the C is missing here it is called bracket notation but the meaning is similar um, in the bracket notation direct notation this A the column matrix is represented by by this notation it is nothing but A1, A2, A3 like this and adjoint is represented by so this this is kate notation this is kate notation and this is now bra notation and that is nothing but in the matrix form it is the adjoint of it which means it is a1 star a2 star a3 star like this it's, it becomes a, um, a row matrix so this is our this is represented by a row matrix and when I say inner product it is the bracket notation. So, I use this uh, bracket notation I do not have C in bracket notation inner product will be given by like this which is nothing but in the matrix form it is going to be transpose uh, uh, um, it is going to be um, adjoint multiplied by its own so which is nothing but a1 star a2 star a3 star let us assume that I have 3 elements then a1 a2 a3 I multiply I get a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square and norm is given by square root of this inner product the square root of inner product I get the norm similarly this is this is called inner product we are representing. So, this is inner product similarly I can define outer product as well and outer product is going to be following 
I will have um, in this case I will not have bracket I will have ket bra. So, outer product is given by ket bra which means I have this multiplied by this in matrix form this is the Dirac notation uh, Dirac notation and in the matrix form now I can represent it like this is going to be a matrix multiplied by now a dagger which is nothing but a1 a2 a3 and this is going to be column uh, row matrix so it's going to be a1 star a a2 star a3 star and if i multiply matrix multiplication we have to employ and matrix multiplication can be done following way we have to always follow this way and this way so if we do that then in the end we get this matrix a1 a1 star a1 a2 star a1 a3 star so we have to multiply this one first and this one then I am supposed to add this one next one um, uh, next one multiplied by next one but that is 0 we do not have anything that is why we are getting only one term in this each element. So I have, I have to multiply this one first this one first to get this element then I have to multiply this one first and this one first to get this element and that is the way we will move forward similarly a2 a1 star then a2 a2 star then a2 a3 star a3 a1 star a3 a2 star and a3 a3 star this is what we get and after we get that we can further uh, rewrite this matrix as this one is nothing but this one and this one all these um, uh, diagonal elements can be represented by this then a1 a2 star a1 a3 star similarly a2 a1 star then a2 and then a2 a3 star then a3 a1 star a3 a2 star a3 a a3 absolute square okay so what we see is that in the diagonal term we get individual absolute square and in the off diagonal terms all these off diagonal terms we get the cross terms so this kind of um, ket bra notation will be used um, to represent the density operator we will go back uh, we will come back to density operator later stage not right now it is related to density operator we will come back to this later but inner product we have understood inner product is going to be bracket where I have presented like this way we will move on we will uh, present the trace of a square matrix trace of a square matrix is the sum of all of its diagonal elements which means that I will write down TR within bracket A is nothing but summation of a i i 
So, if I have a matrix like um, A11, A12, A21, A22, then trace of A would be then trace of A would be A11 plus A22. Its diagonal elements we have to sum. Determinant of a square matrix, if I have a matrix like this A11, A12, A21, A22, then determinant is given by, is represented by this uh, is given by this A11, A12, A21, A22 which can be simplified as A1, A22 minus A21, A12. This is called determinant of, of the square matrix. Inverse of a, a square matrix, if matrix looks like this A11, A12, A21, A22, then inverse of the matrix would be given by, will be defined um, as, this will be defined by A, A inverse if I multi matrix multiply A inverse that will give me an identity matrix. An identity matrix, what is identity matrix? Identity matrix is nothing but the diagonal element is 1. That is the way inverse of the matrix will be defined. We will move on and we will explore now the eigenvalue and eigenvector of a square matrix. This is an important subject and in linear algebra and this is used very frequently to find out the eigenvalue and eigenvector of the Hamiltonian operator and Hamiltonian operator will be represented in terms of square matrix and the moment we represent it in terms of square matrix we will be able to find out eigenvalue and eigenvector. Eigenvectors are eigenstates so which means that I will be able to get the different eigenstates or the spectrum of the system. So this subject is very important. The eigenvalues of a matrix can be computed from uh, using this characteristic equation of the matrix, this is called characteristic equation. And uh, this is this is identity, um, sorry, uh, yeah, identity matrix or unit matrix I and um, um, and this is zero matrix or null mat matrix where all elements are zero. So we'll take we'll do one thing. We'll we'll take one uh, example here to find out eigenvalue eigenvector. So let's say I have the matrix two one one two, a simple two by two matrix I have. So if I have two by two matrix like this, then characteristic equation would be characteristic equation would be following it is going to be determinant of 2 minus lambda 1 1 2 minus lambda. This is the characteristic equation why it is so because A is 2 1 1 2 minus lambda multiplied by identity matrix or unit matrix which is given by 1 0 0 1 then it is determinant. So addition or subtraction, so first of all this is a scalar uh, multiplication so we will be able to multiply each element with this scalar. Once we are done then we can use this subtraction, subtraction is equivalent to the addition 
procedure where each element will be subtracted which means that I will be able to get matrix 2 minus lambda then 1, 1 then 2 minus lambda and we are taking the determinant. So, that is exactly what we have written here. This is going to be 0. So, this is this is actually what we have written here this determinant has to be a 0. I will get a 0 matrix. So, the, this value will be 0. So, how can I get that? This determinant can be simplified as follows 2 minus lambda whole square minus 1 equals 0 or lambda square minus 4 lambda plus 3 equals 0 or I can write down lambda plus minus 2 values I will get because it is some um, order is 2 second order. So, I um, will be able to get 2 values which is going to be 4 plus minus square root of 16 minus 12 divided by 2. This is the root finding we are trying to find out the root with the general expression and I get finally the value is going to be 3 and 1. So, lambda has now 3 and 1 and what is lambda? Lambda is the eigenvalue, lambda is the eigenvalue which means that if I have an Hamiltonian operator which is represented now in terms of Hamiltonian matrix, once we represent it in, in terms of Hamiltonian matrix then I can find out just like this way we will not follow this procedure there are other more convenient procedures are available not using this characteristic equation. I will present it what kind of convenient procedures are available. But let us say I have certain convenient procedure to um, get the eigenvalues. Once I get the eigenvalues it means that I am getting all the energy levels. Here because it is 2 by 2 I get only 2 energy uh, 2 values of the uh, 2 eigenvalues. Next we would like to find out for lambda equals 1 what is the associated with particular state lambda equals 1 eigenvalue what is the eigenvector or the wave function uh, should look like. That can be represented by following we have this eigenvalue equation which is uh, A um, wave function equals lambda wave function that is the eigenvalue equation and in the matrix form how do I represent it? In the matrix form we will represent it A has been represented in terms of matrix 2, 1, 1, 2. Then psi is going to be unknown it is unknown to me that is why I will write down A1, A2. Remember I am now representing psi in the basis of something whose uh, and which and that basis is giving me this coefficient just like the way we have presented previously. So, these coefficients are with respect to certain basis. Let us say the coefficients are a1 and a2 and which is which means that lambda equals 1 and then a1, a2. a1, a2 is unknown. So, psi this wave function associated with this particular Eigen value I am representing like this a1 and a2 a column matrix. So, I can now multiply vector mul uh, this is uh, uh, matrix multiplication and this matrix multiplication will give me 2 a1 plus a2 and another one is a1 plus 2 a2. This is the matrix I will get which is equals to a1 a2. So, now what we will do? We will equate the components of the vector on the left and right hand side. If we equate it, so this part has to be equal to this and this part has to be equal to this. If it is so then I will be able to write down 2 a1 plus a2 equals a1 or a1 equals minus a2. So, if I have a1 equals minus a2 I can assume that ok a1 let us take a1 to be 1 because does not matter what basis we take finally we need the relative components. So, for a particular basis I may get a1 equals 1 and if I get a1 equals 1 immediately I get a2 equals minus 1 which means I have the um, I have the uh, 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 the wave function the for associated with this state that particular uh, Eigen state will be represented by 1 minus 1. One can suggest ok I do not want to use 1 I want to use 2 
and I uh, then I can get 2 also minus 2 that is also fine one can use that. It does not matter what we use because depending on the moment we take 2 it means that I am changing the basis depending on the basis I may get different coefficient. So, so I am selecting one basis for which I should get 1 for a1 and the moment I get 1 for a1 I get 1 minus 1 for a2 immediately and we can represent that wave function by this way 1 minus 1. So, 1 minus 1 is, go is going to be the representation and I have two states. So, I have two states like this one state I have given is a lambda equals 1 another one is 3 and uh, it is uh, it is uh, this, this wave function will be represented 1 minus 1 and we will see what what is the representation for this. So, for that we have to take lambda equals 3. So, here we have to take 3 lambda equals 3 and if we take lambda equals 3 then this is going to be 3 and if it is 3 then again we can use the matrix multiplication rule. Um, it, it takes quite a while to um, be familiar with this matrix multiplication part. So, I suggest you to um, practice a lot 2 a 1 plus b 2 as uh, oh sorry this is the, this now going to be a new um, coefficient because this is a new state. So, I will call it b 1 b 2 and this is b 1 b 2 associated with particular this eigenstate. So, I have this um, 2 b 1 plus b 2 and this one is b 1 plus 2 b 2 which is now going to be 3 b 1 3 b 2. So, now I have to equate this each element on both sides if I <coughs> make them equal then I get 2 b 1 plus b 2 equals 3 b 1 which means b 1 equals b 2. In this case now if I use b 1 equals 1 then b 2 equals going to be 1. So, I have now the second state to be like 1 1 that is the state we have. So, the so if, if A is represented by the Hamiltonian then I have two states and for these two states the first energy is going to be 1, second energy is going to be 3 some unit and each wave function associated with these states will be represented by this column matrix 1 minus 1 and 1 1. We will use um, heavily use this kind of matrix representation uh, in this course. So, going over this um, exercise would help uh, adapt the procedure. So, now what we will do we will find out the norm of the uh, uh, the norm of the eigenvectors. So, we have two states right now and we would like to normalize both states so that we can get the normalized wave functions and associated with this 1 minus 1 state we will get the norm. How do we get the norm? Norm is given by uh, inner product square of square root of the inner product. Inner product is nothing but a dagger multiplied by a which is nothing but 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 square root of this. So, square root of the entire thing. So, I get 1 plus 1 square root is going to be square root of 2. So, normalization constant is going to be 1 by normalized wave function is given by the uh, psi 1 I call it divided by its norm psi 1 that is we have shown already. So, this is nothing but 1 by square root of 2 then 1 minus 1 which is nothing but 1 by square root of 2 minus 1 by square root of 2. So, this is the normalized wave function we have associated with lambda equals 1. Next, we will uh, normalize the uh, second state 
and the second state can be normalized in following way. We can again take the inner product which is second state is 1 1 1 1 state and if I take the inner product we will see that again I have this is going to be uh, the inner product is going to be again uh, square root of 2 and that is why uh, this normalized uh, function psi 3 is represented by 1 by square root of 2, 1 by square root of 2. So, these are the two, uh, this is the representation of psi 1 and psi 3. Psi 3 has energy or lambda eigenvalue 3 and psi 1 has lambda equals 1. So, these are the two states we can represent with the help of matrix representation. So, one thing is clear from this um, entire um, exercise that as long as we know Hamiltonian operator and as long as we can convert it to its matrix form, the moment we get the matrix form I can uh, immediately uh, calculate its uh, find out its eigenvalue and eigenvectors and we can get normalized wave functions associated with that Hamiltonian. So, normalized wave functions and eigenstates are giving the uh, quantum states for the for the system. So, uh, finding out this eigenvalue eigenvector uh, procedure is very important, but uh, often we will avoid this using characteristic equation of the matrix. This procedure is rigorous procedure and it may not be useful uh, for bigger matrix. Uh, the more convenient way of doing is uh, diagonalization of a normalized matrix. So, so it is a, it's a diagonalizing, diagonalization of a square matrix. This is, this is what we uh, do and what is diagonalization? I will I'll, I'll, uh, explain it right now. We have seen that if I take this matrix, this is just an example we are illustrating this example so that we can understand it. Um, for this matrix we have seen that the eigenvalue is 1 and 3 and corresponding normalized corresponding normalized um, eigenvectors are like this. We will stop here and uh, we will continue the discussion of diagonalizing of uh, a square matrix in the in the next session.